ever rolling river, trickling in the hills, singing under bridges, whispering through the fields. Whispering of lazy trout, whispering of time, black beneath the alders, where the dipper bobs, bobs. You call me river rolling through compliant fields. Our towns of charity and betting shops, our revolutionary mills. Outlets later for Eastern mills, making toys and shoes. Funny how the world turns round and sells us back your news. Oh river, rolling river, you Called me as a boy A daydreaming truant Pushing through the bulrushes With just a stick for defence I was lying on the trunk of a willow. Lines of sunlight snaking up its undersides. Where the flashing water passes, there I watched a shoal of little suns, countless suns, a river of stars. Everything that ever lived was there. And yet, I was perfectly alone. Deep beneath the alders, your soft chorus singing in tongues. confluence of the Derwent and Wye, the valley broadens, and the combined waters meander through the widest floodplain in the Peak District. It's nothing on the scale of the ooze washes, but between Rosley and Matlock, the broad flat fields are like an expansion tank before the bottleneck of the limestone gorge of Matlock and Matlock Bath. A couple of old farms have made good use of this fertile plain, but over the centuries the farmers here have repeatedly borne the cost of living on floodland. Once these fields were thick with reeds and wet much of the year. Peewits and skylarks nested in the sedges. But through agriculture and housing, the land has been drained and the peewits have gone. So when the floods come 
more of the water is more quickly transferred downstream. The millions spent in the flood defence of Crown Square and Matlock Bridge makes you wonder if it wouldn't be wiser to let floodplains be floodplains. On the limestone plateau, things are different. Here, water quickly disappears through joints and fissures in the limestone. So this landscape of high, rolling pastures is prone to drought. Before main supply, this was a problem. It's why villages such as Hartington and Moniash cluster round natural mears. Why farmers with livestock built dew ponds lined with clay, and why the wells and springs which never failed, even during long, dry summers, are still blessed with offerings and flowers. There's no water in the, in the building. Oh, no, there are no water in buildings. No. It could be a mere we'd just go down to. Mm. And, and the mere was a, a sort of naturally... At Mayfalong, that was a natural mm. water mm. down in the field. Like mm. Mm. Winter, you just have to go down and break the ice first mm. before you can let cows mm. go down. Mm. Mm. What, was that... Is, is Grindon on gritstone? Or is it limestone? Limestone, limestone. yeah. Mm. Yeah, because it's, it's a bit difficult, isn't it, water, you know? Some of the farms have got problems with water, haven't they, on the land? Yeah, well, I mean, in Derbyshire, yeah. one time there was no water, no, no it was all um, mm. catch water and yeah. mears and that. Yeah. But, I mean, mm. since, you know, come more modern, everybody's got, mm. you know, mains water mm. now. Let us pray. As we give thanks for and ask your blessing upon the water from this well, may its ever-flowing nature remind us of your never-failing love, and may we live lives of faithful endurance and hope, bearing witness to your love for all creation. Amen. And we will now sing that most wonderful of farming hymns, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. At the moment, we're dressing four wells for the Buxton Well Dressing. We create uh, new designs every year, and basically the well dressing is a celebration of the availability of clean, pure water. So we have a blessing service at the wells on Sunday to uh, thank God for fresh water. So the actual well dressing is a process of building up the pitcher with all natural materials, that's the tradition, and all the materials are pressed into a bed of clay. So where are the boards currently? Currently in the river. So we soak the boards for about 10 days before puddling night, so that basically they're wet, and hopefully that helps in terms of the longevity of the, of the well dressing, because it's not sucking the water out of the clay. Puddling is when we put the clay onto the boards and the kids love it. 
you know, they turn out in their, in, in their thousands and throw clay around. So that's the first stage of basically getting the well dressing started. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Don't waste the clay. We're just going to pad the clay. Puddling? Yeah. What's your puddling? Uh, board for the well dressing. We are filling clay on the wooden boards for the, all the well dressings around the village. Yeah. sort of think about uh, Roman customs or pagan customs where obviously especially in limestone areas a, a village's spring was essential to life because water drains away very easily through limestone doesn't it? Whole rivers disappear in some places um, so people celebrated their water if uh, maybe a, a village had, had escaped something like the Black Death they would put it down to their fresh water and celebrate it and lots of those sort of customs became Christianised. We talk about Yule, Christmas, Samhain, is All Saints, Halloween. So, you know, these things have sort of gone on through the years and become part of our culture today, even though they've got those deeply held roots. I think I always think about um, who can go past a wishing well without throwing a coin in. You know, there's something deep within us, I think. The history behind it is, is lost. You know, we don't know what was happening. But I mean, people just didn't invent well dressing. It didn't. There must have been something prior to it. Because it's such an unusual festival to have these large boards that you then that you cover in clay and lay them horizontally so that you can work on them. Cover it with a design and lo and behold you then put it upright. And they're big, you know, they're, they're 10, 12 foot high. They're heavy, they're unwieldy, but at the end of the day, it's a beautiful piece of ephemeral art. Because after two days, it's gone. You know, really, if you've got a sunny day like today, most wells don't last longer than two or three days. So we use things like leaves and we use different coloured flower petals. Our favourite flowers are things like hydrangeas which have got long lasting qualities so they don't just shrivel up as soon as the boards go up. And then we'll use like seeds, anything that's natural. So that, for instance we're doing a, a well celebrating the centenary of the discovery of Tutankhamun. So we've got gold foil on our main picture board. So that's something a bit different. OK, so is that a bit of a departure? <laughs> yeah, it from... is really, yeah, gold leaf. So I, I reckon it's natural, so... <laughs> <laughs> gold leaves grow on trees, yeah. don't they? <laughs> of course they do. Well, some <laughs> might argue, but there we go. <laughs> I've been a lifelong well dresser from the age of six, and I'm now 57. And I've been chair of your grave well dressers, 17 years now. We once did a, virtually a whole well dressing of buttercup petals. Now you think of the size of a buttercup pet petal, you know, it's only probably one square centimetre at the most. And we did virtually the whole of the pitch board in, in, in buttercup petals. I mean, it was stunning. It was like a Gustav Klimt design. Um, with a woman in a, in a yellow dress. So had like a shimmering. And it's, oh, well, quality. that's the thing is that is that the that side of the buttercup was iridescent. Now I work on the fountain well, and about six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, the sun just comes round the corner by the church, 
and you get that glorious light, that beautiful gold light onto the well dressing first thing in the morning. And it doesn't get any better than that. But of course, facing the sun means that if the sun's strong, it dries out very good. For me, that's one of the things I love about well dressing is that it is an ephemeral thing, you know, it only, you know, maybe it's linked to the fact that we're giving to it thanks to something that actually could be quite ephemeral if you don't look after it. Having a clean, plentiful water supply is something you do have to look after and people have to work to keep that infrastructure going. And of course, this village relies on that water supply because we're not on Seven Trent. We, you know, we supply our own water to the, to the village. So it's, you know, it's the brevity of some of the things that we do just for the, you know, for some people it's God, for some people it's, I don't know, just giving thanks. I mean, you know, you get people turn up and say, oh, all that work, you know, 200 hours of work just for a couple of days of, of this display. And I think, yeah, I, yeah. And we do it year in, year out. Great. I love it. <laughs> I'll chuckle and whisper, murmur and chatter to the hummingbird's soft breeze flutter. I dip, swoop, flip and dive because my favourite dance is the jive. I spit, splatter, Whirl and splash, diving deep down with a big, loud crash. Crisp and sour in the early morning light and soft at the charcoal night. I'm a deep sapphire, emerald blue, or sometimes crystal white against the early morning moon. I can be aggressive against your smooth skin. What am I? You've been listening to The Blessing of Water from the series Voices from the Peak, featuring Evie Willis, formerly of Buxton Junior School, reading her poem Waterfall, lifelong well dresser Fred Baker, secretary of Buxton well dressers Christine Gold, a choir at Tissington, a chorus of crickets. Rural Chaplain Alison Fletcher, the Reverend T. Morris and Hartington Farmer Bill Chadwick, with music by Dave Sturt from his album Dreams and Absurdities, and pianist Robert Dimbleby accompanying the poem River Rolling River. Voices from the Peak is written, recorded and edited by me, Mark Gwynne Jones, and produced by myself and Paul Hopkinson, with support from the Peak District National Park Authority, Derbyshire County Council and Arts Council England.